the tax credit available in each of those places was so essential to the financing of the film. But also you do need to make sure that you're still meeting a creative imperative. often have to make the decision about whether to do an, an independent co-production structure or whether you're going to go with a bigger streamer deal as you just or or studio deal as you just did um, in this last virtual market. Do you want to describe what um, factors into the decision about what route to take with an individual film? Um, yeah, I think what is so as a, a boutique mini studio, I would say, because we producer, financier, and since I join, and all we can handle international distribution ourselves. Um, so the, the 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 question for me personally, and I think for the company as well, um, I really want to to keep the pre-sale model for independent as well. So this is this is key. So um, my challenge and the challenge of all the sales company, if they want to, and the producers as well, if they want to keep this model work, we need to bring studios and streamers in the pre-sale model as well. So on Cursor, the the British film we we produced internally wrapped um, in February in London. I launched it uh, last can. And so we had offers from all the independent. Netflix was circling it. I really pushed Netflix to pre-buy as well. I mean, to be treated as exactly the same way as independent. So I think this is key. We just can't wait the completed film and then destroy all the, 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 the independent deals that are in board on the film. Otherwise, we, we, we kill the, the, this model that has worked for, for producers and for us for so many years. Um, and I think this is, this is really important so that, of course, independent, when they lose a film, I had, yeah, some of, some of them very sad, but at least the, there's no, there's not a contract. And then we say, hey, by the way, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cancel the contract and sell, sell a streamer who hasn't taken any risk, obviously, because it's a completed film. So this is this is really key, I think, in the future years to to keep that model, and to maybe continue the discussion uh, that Elizabeth um, mentioned on the European co-production. I agree, there is a lot of there is a lot of potential in Europe, and as a financier as well, there there are some projects we don't actually. This is something I want to. Um, to keep, I mean, to bring that to undone because they were financier in the U.S. way, I would say, like just pretty, putting fully financed without uh, thinking of doing maybe co-production, soft. Uh, so I think there are projects that it takes maybe a long, longer time. But if you put together the right partners in Europe, maybe between France, Eastern Europe, Benelux, UK, obviously. Um, you reduce tremendously the gap for, and everybody's happy. And I think this is also kind of project that can go to independent. The risk is, is, um, is reduced. I mean, every, I think this is a, 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 a good model that we need to, to keep for sure. So, so really what you're talking about is flexibility, is that by reducing this gap, it gives you more options of what to do with the film later. Exactly. Yeah. So it's you keep more freedom, you keep more control, obviously, mm -hmm. and to, to set up either because if you as a financier, then you have like a lot of gap, you have risk, you're pushing buyers, and if you go on the European co-pro route, I think yeah, people are more involved, um, even creatively. I think that's better, um, and we all know when you set up something at a streamer, maybe six months later, they drop it, uh, they change their mind. I mean, they're so, so, and, and if you set it up at a studio, that's, that's the same. It's longer, they can drop it. It's not as good as it seems. <laughs> I think there's always, there's, you know, in a creative industry, there's always going to be that tricky interface between business and creativity. And as a producer, financier, you try and find that sweet spot 
whether it's a film where you know, we've had films where you film somewhere because the tax credit is so advantageous in that place. Carol, we filmed in Cincinnati. Colette, we filmed in Hungary. Mothering Sunday, we filmed in the UK. The tax credit available in each of those places was so essential to the financing of the film. But also, you do need to make sure that you're still meeting a creative imperative. So whenever you take advantage of a European co-production, you cannot lose sight of the necessity of reaching a certain creative level because those pre-sales you made are expecting you to deliver a first-class film. No one sets out to make a bad film, you know, sometimes it doesn't all come together, hopefully it does, but you cannot lose sight of that when putting together your finance. And certainly for us, trying to, I mean, it is creative control, but also what we love about having these ongoing relationships with our partners is there's a level of trust and you feel like you're with a family and everyone's in the enterprise together and that's very very important because um, you want to support your filmmaker and if you're supporting your filmmaker you want to have the support of your investors behind you and then there's the other thing of you know we've done films that have turned into musicals we have films that are turning into TV series you know the subsequent productions has become a very, very vital and vivacious space, probably beyond expectations, certainly when I started in the industry, you know, 30 odd years ago. Like, who would have thought that John Waters' tiny independent movie is relived as a Broadway musical that then becomes a film of that Broadway musical? And those are all things that independent production companies and producers really need for their longevity. Mm -hmm.